myself Dr. Devaya Arora, Assistant Professor CVTS UN Metha. Today I am going to present a brief discussion over cardiothoracic trauma. It is one of a leading cause of death. 25% of deaths are due to trauma and out of which 70% are due to blunt trauma. We can here have a brief look to the mechanism. Either it can be deacceleration or compression force which can lead to injury to multiple structures in the chest like soft tissue neck injuries, larynx and tracheal injuries, sternum, cardiac injuries, intra-abdominal injuries, hemonemothorax, flail chest and C-spine fractures. We will have a brief look of uh, all the injuries and management of them. As soon as a patient arrives in the emergency, there is a basic protocol called A. TLS guidelines according to which we review our patient that is the primary survey. The primary survey includes ABC, ABC means airway, breathing and circulation of the patient. If all these factors are stable then we can take a patient for CT scan and if he fulfills the ETC criteria that is stable hemodynamics, no vasopressors, lactate less than 2, adequate breathing and pressures then we can shift the patient to ICU and totally early total care is needed. But if ABC is unstable, if there is any obstruction to the airway, then intubation of the patient, ventilation is needed, maintaining deep breathing. If supposedly there is hemonemothorax or any trauma, then planning tube thoracostomy and then maintaining the circulation. If there is severe blood loss, replacing the blood with the blood. This all includes the management of ABC and once we stabilize then we can shift the patient to ICU for the early care but in case if he falls into the DCS criteria then life saving surgery is planned for the patient. Mechanism of the injury could be deacceleration, compression, penetrating or both. The most commonly lethal injuries are like tension pneumothorax, we need tube thoracostomy, massive intrathoracic hemorrhage needs tube thoracostomy or may also require operative repair. In case of cardiac tamponade, pericardiocentesis and repair, deacceleration, aortic injury, operative repair and for massive flail chest with pulmonary contusion, intubation, pain management, fluid re resuscitation. Diagnostic test. First, we focus on chest radiography. It is very helpful, useful and easily available test. It can help us in identifying the injuries foreign body and the location of the injury of the rib can help us in directing to the underlying injury like upper ribs may cause injury to great vessels, clavicle fracture may lead to pulmonary or cardiac contusions, lung fields, hemonemothorax and media wi mediastinum widening, widening may help us to know that there is underlying cardiac tamponade or if there is a soft tissue injury there could be subcutaneous emphysema. CT chest is comparatively more sensitive. Ultrasonography directs in pass that is focused assessment for the sonographic evaluation of the trauma patient in which we mainly look at right upper quadrant, left upper quadrant. pelvis and subxiphoid and then there is again extended fast which also focuses on the right and left hemithoraces. Echocardiography helps in knowing the cardiac status and angiography is indicated in patients with high speed deacceleration injury, upper extremity hypertension, unexplained hypotension, pulse deficit or systolic murmur. Emergency thoracotomy. The mainly accepted indications are an unresponsive patient with ex rapid exsanguination for more than 1500 ml, traumatic arrest that is pre or in a hospital following penetrating injury, and persistent hypotension, systolic blood pressure less than 60, cardiac tamponade, or air embolism. Relative indications are traumatic arrest pre or in hospital following blunt injury 
traumatic arrest without previous witness cardiac activity following penetrating injury pre hospital cpr for less than 10 minutes if the patient is intubated and for less than 5 minutes if patient is non intubated contraindications are blunt thoracic injuries with no previously witnessed cardiac activity multiple blunt trauma and severe head injury now let's have look to the various injuries in chest wall if there is a rib fracture mainly it is due to direct trauma more common in adults elderly mainly because the bones are osteoporotic and more common from 5th to 9th ribs because they have poor protection first and second rib require high force and they can lead injury to aorta or bronchi 90% associated with tracheal bronchial rupture or injury to subclavian artery and vein trauma to 4th to 9th rib may cause injury to lung bronchus pleura and heart and 10th to 12th rib may cause injury to abdominal organs hepatic spleen or renal mainly the patient presents with localized pain tenderness which is increased on palpation coughing or movement instability might be there in chest wall bony crepitus can be heard deformity and discoloration and may be associated with pneumo or hemothorax our focus remains on relieving the pain prevention of atelectasis and optimization of pulmonary toilet flail chest we define flail chest when four or more ribs are fractured at two sides unilaterally or bilaterally there is a free floating segment of a rib and it is usually secondary to blunt trauma but may also result from fall from heights industrial accidents assault or birth trauma commonly associated in older patients mortality rate due to flail chest can be up to 33% and it increases with advanced age if seven or more ribs are fractured associated with three or more injuries shock and head injuries consequences of flail chest there can be respiratory failure due to pulmonary contusion intrathoracic injury in adequate diaphragm movement paradoxical movement of chest if it is large enough to compromise ventilation and it increases work of breathing pain leads to decreased chest expansion contusion of lung leads to decreased lung compliance and intra alveolar capillary hemorrhage and there is decreased ventilation which can cause hypercapnia hypoxia and decreased ventilation management rate is more than 40 breaths per minute po2 less than 60 in spite of 60% face mask o2 high concentration oxygen is required assisted ventilation with bvm can be used pain relief and mechanical stabilization if needed sternal fracture they are uncommon 3 to 8% in blunt trauma usually require high energy force or can be due to direct blow to chest by deacceleration injuries like steering wheel dashboard isolated mortality in sternal fracture is less than 3.5% but is usually associated with myocardial contusion cardiac tamponade or pulmonary contusion clavicular fractures most common site is middle one third types of fracture it could be distal to coroclavicular ligament in which the acromion clavicular joint is intact with minimal di- displacement type 2 can be a and b with chest medial to conoid ligament is a and b is disruption of conoid ligament and type 3 is distal to coroclavicular ligament extend- extending to the acromion clavicular joint patient usually presents with pain tenderness at the local side deformity crepitus and rarely associated with neurovascular injury for the undisplaced the management is mainly close reduction with figure of 8 sling and pain relief in case it is displaced fracture then surgical management is needed scapular fractures are rare high kinetic energy is required patient usually presents with localized tender hematoma and swelling immobilization and pain relief is mainly the management traumatic asphyxia or perthes syndrome it is very uncommon 
and is mainly caused because of severe crushing or compression injury preceded by deep inspiration. Patient can have subconjunctival hemorrhage, cervicofacial cyanosis, purple blue neck, facial edema, vascular engorgement of head, mucosal petechiae, multiple chymotic hemorrhage of face, neck and upper chest and could even have cerebral hypoxia. Diagnosis is mainly based on history and physical examination. Our goal remains ABC that is establishing airway, breathing and circulation and head elevation of 30 degree is done. Pulmonary contusion, it is commonly associated with blunt trauma is mainly caused due to deacceleration injury, steering wheel injury. Patient presents with dyspnea, tachypnea, hemopsis, cyanosis and hypotension. On examination, we can find inspiratory rails and decreased breath sound on the involved side. Study of choice remains CT scan and management is according to ATLS guidelines. Laryngeal injuries are rare. Mortality associated is 40% is mainly due to cause is crashes, hanging and spotting blows. Presentation can be hoarseness, pain, skin contusion, cervical emphysema, crepitus, dysphagia and upper airway obstruction, dysphonia. Diagnostic investigation again remains CT scan. Either observe if the patient is stable or repair if indicated. Tracheobronchial injuries. These are again uncommon and require high energy like dashboard injury. Carina is most susceptible point as it is fixed. Patient can have respiratory distress, dyspnea and air leak, subcutaneous emphysema with tension pneumothorax. Diagnostic test remains flexible bronchoscopy and management is effective airway management by, by bypassing the lesion and putting the tube in the normal lumen. Surgical repair is indicated. But if missed, on long term patient can have late complications like bronchial stenosis, recurrent pneumonia and bronchiectasis. Now we come to blunt cardiac injuries. Patient with significant trauma, either blunt or penetrating, can have injuries to heart or great vessel until proven otherwise. Here we can have a look. There are certain primary determinants and trigger like by the hockey puck, Larkos ball, baseball, fist or elbow directly or the chest can lead to cardiac trauma and various contributing variables are the hardness of the projectile, smaller sphere, direct orientation, thinner and more compliant chest wall and moreover if the trauma is received during the upstroke of T wave. Cardiac contusion, it is again more common in blunt trauma, De can be caused because of deaccelerating trauma, causing compression of heart between sternum and vertebral bodies. It is 10 to 70 percent significant cause of morbidity and mortality in blunt trauma patient. Patient can have cardiac arrhythmias, angina like pain, unresponsive to nitroglycerin, precordial discomfort, independent of respiratory movement, pericardial friction rub. ECG may present with persistent tachycardia, ST elevation, T wave inversion, right bundle branch block, atrial flutter, fibrillation, PVCs and PACs. Pericardial tamponade. It is more common with penetrating trauma, rare in blunt trauma, occurs in less than 2% of patients with chest trauma. Gunshot wounds have higher mortality than stab wounds. Lower mortality rate if isolated tamponade is there. Roughly there is around 30 to 50 ml of pericardial fluid which offers lubrication and cushion to the heart. But if there is rapid accumulation of blood in the inelastic pericardium, it leads to decreased diastolic expansion and filling, hindering the venous return. 
which leads to decreased myocardial perfusion because of the pressure effects on the wall of the heart and leads to decreased diastolic pressure. There can be ischemic dysfunction because of the injury also. Removal of as little as 20 ml of blood may drastically improve cardiac output. Patient may present with back stride, narrowing pulse pressure, pulses paradoxes, that is radial pulse become weak or disappears when the patient inhales and there is increase in thoracic pressure on inhalation causes blood to be trapped in lungs temporarily. Management again remains as ABC guideline securing airway high oxygen concentration pericardiosynthesis rapid transport to trauma center IV fluids in case of hypotension and definitive treatment is pericardiosynthesis followed by a surgical pericardial window. Here is the algorithm if there is a suspicion of blunt cardiac injury then we focus on ECG and FAST. If both are normal and the patient is hemodynamically stable then no further evaluation is needed. But if there is abnormal FAST, surgical evaluation is needed. And if there is abnormal ECG with arrhythmias, ST abnormality, ischemia and heart block, then continuous cardiac monitoring, troponin if signs of ischemia, serial FAST examinations, admit to ICU and if further needed, ECO and TEE is preferred. Great vessels injury. They are mainly caused by motor vehicle collisions, fall from height, crushing chest trauma, annual kicks and blunt chest trauma. 50% of all blunt trauma deaths are due to great vessel injuries in which 85% of patients die immediately. 10-15% to only survive to hospital out of which one third die within 6 hours, another third in 24 hours and one third survive three days or longer. So there should be high index of suspicion. Assessment findings may be like retrosternal or interscapular pain, pain in lower back or one leg, respiratory distress, asymmetrical arm BP, upper extremity hypertension with decreased femoral pulses or absent femoral pulses or dysphagia. Management again is establishing airway, high concentration oxygen, fluids, but fluid administration should be restricted and emergency transport to trauma center where vascular surgery facility is available. Diaphragmatic rupture, its incidence is 0.8 to 8%, usually due to blunt trauma but can be associated with penetrating trauma even. But usually it is associated with other organ injuries and it is more common 90% on the left side because right side it is protected by the liver. It can be due to compression of abdomen resulting in increase in tri-abdominal pressure leading to shifting of contents through the diaphragm into the chest, bowel obstruction and strangulation, restriction of lung expansion, mediastinal shift. On examination there can be decreased breath sounds usually unilateral, dullness to percussion dyspnea or respiratory distress, scaphoid abdomen and impossible to hear the bowel sounds. Diaphragmatic penetration, it is more suspected when blunt trauma chest is associated with injuries before, below fourth intercostal space and sus, intrathoracic trauma is suspected with any injury above the umbilicus. On examination, there is pain, local tenderness, hoarseness, dysphagia, respiratory distress, resistance of neck or passive movement. Mediastinal esophageal perforation can be associated with mediastinal emphysema, mediastinal crunch, mediastinitis, subcutaneous emphysema, or splinting of chest wall or shock. Esophageal injuries, these are more common in penetrating trauma and can occur spontaneously with violent MSS or carcinoma. 
Now we'll have a brief look on the penetrating trauma. It can be because of stab or firearm injuries, but in gut, gunshot injury, the trauma is more because it transmits the kinetic energy to the surrounding organs, whereas in the stab wound, it is limited to the track. So our focus again remains to have a systematic approach towards the patient. In penetrating chest trauma, if the airway or breathing is involved, then tracheobronchial injury, it can be fatal associated with hemopsis, persistent air leak. A bronchoscopy is needed and again, we first focus on intubating the normal bronchus. If there is an open pneumothorax with a sucking wound, then occlusive dressing is required. And if tension pneumothorax is suspected, which leads to decreased venous return and mediastinal shift, tube thoracostomy is indicated. If circulation is affected with hemothorax, thoracotomy, if there is more than 1500 ml continuous bleeding, patient is unstable or the cardiac boxes involved. If patient has cardiac tamponade, backstride, echo and fast examination shows blood in pericardial window, then pericardiosynthesis or finally pericardial window. Resuscitative thoracotomy is indicated in penetrating injuries when there is severe hemorrhage, pulseless with electrical activity and CPR in field with signs of life. Once we stabilize the patient with these things, then we go for secondary survey, looking out any injury to the abdomen or diaphragm. We'll have a brief review for the management of patient with chest trauma. So if the patient arriving in emergency is hemodynamically stable or not, if he is unstable, then our focus remains on trauma resuscitation, evaluation with fast chest x-ray and ECG and management of the life-threatening injury. If there is excessive blood loss, patient is pulseless, then patient may need possibly thoracotomy. If there are absent breath sounds, that may be unilateral or diminished breath sounds. On chest x-ray, there is hemothorax or pneumothorax, then tube thoracostomy is done. And if the chest x-ray shows significant hemothorax, then also tube thoracostomy is done. Now, if persistent hemodynamic instability is there or there is blood loss, if yes is the answer, then the patient is taken to OT for thoracotomy. But if no and patient is stabilized, then we can plan for CCD chest or TE or angiography. But if the patient arriving is hemodynamically stable, but there is high risk mechanism or significant injury identified by initial examination, then first the evaluation is done by fast X-ray, ECG and immediate management is done. If there is high speed D acceleration mechanism or significant chest injury, if yes, then see CT chest, but if no, then we can do with the X-ray. And if there are any abnormal findings in the X-ray, then we plan for CCT chest, but if no, then patient can be discharged or kept under observation. But if it is none of the above, the patient is stable and there is no high risk mechanism or significant injury, then we consider for secondary survey with PA and lateral chest x-ray. But if there is any specific concern, then ECG if it is an elderly patient. If any abnormal finding, then we go for appropriate treatment for the evaluation as indicated and generally CCT chest is done. But if everything is normal, then the patient can be discharged again. And if any symptoms are there, we can keep him under observation. Pitfalls to avoid. Elderly do not tolerate relatively minor chest injuries. Anticipate progression to acute respiratory insufficiency. Children may sustain significant intrathoracic injury without evidence of thoracic skeletal trauma. So maintain a high index of suspicion. Don't overlook the obvious and be suspicious of the non-obvious. Thank you.